Oh, hey there. So it's come to my attention recently that there seems to be a lot of misunderstanding and misconception regarding wheel spacers. So today, I thought I'd go over the ins and outs of wheel spacers. So to start off, the purpose of the wheel spacer is to change the effective offset of whatever wheel that you're running. It does so by spacing out the wheel from the hub via the spacer. Now there are many different reasons why you want to change the effective offset of whatever wheels that you're running. For example, one of the reasons would be that the wheel that you want to run on your car isn't available in the offset that you desire. For instance, this NK Cogen that I'm running right here is a 17 by 9 plus 35. A plus 35 offset for me is too high. However, that is the lowest offset that NK currently offers um, in this wheel and in this size. And so what I've done is I've put on a 25 millimeter spacer over here in order to change the effective offset to a plus 10 and that makes it good for me. And for a lot of people out there, there are specific wheels that are just their dream wheels that they really love the designs of that they want to run, but it just doesn't come in the offset that they need. And so a spacer would be used in order to get it to their desired offset. Or if you find a good deal on a set of wheels with the offset is just too high, you can then run a set of spacers on there. So that way you can get your desired effective offset. And then of course you save money by getting a good deal on your wheels. Another reason for why you would run wheel spacers would be maybe for sponsor obligations. So a lot of the times you have sponsor obligations when you have, you know, a race car and you can only run specific wheels in specific sizes just because of their availability. Like for example, Kangushi, um, I spoke to Kangushi's like crew chief person at Nitto Auto Enthusiast Day, I believe in 2015 or 2016, they were running a wheel spacer on Kangushi's FRS drift car. And I asked them the reason behind it, and that was just because the car had to get done by a certain deadline and the sponsor that was sponsoring their wheels just didn't have the wheels in the correct size and offset that they needed at that specific time in order to make their Formula Drift event. And so what they did instead was put wheel spacers on the wheels that they were giving to them and their sponsors in the incorrect size and offset so that way it still looked decent on the car and made the wheels look good for the sponsors. Another reason why people run spacers is to change their track width on the front end or rear end of their car. And another reason people use wheel spacers is to change their scrub radius. A big misconception that people have about wheel spacers is that it always makes the scrub radius worse. However, that is not always true. Wheel spacers increase your scrub radius. However, if your scrub radius is too low or negative, then increasing your scrub radius can actually improve your car's handling. Moving on from that, people also run wheel spacers in order to space out their wheel from their brake caliper, so that way they can run a big brake kit or a specific set of brakes with a specific set of wheels because some brakes will end up sitting too close to the spoke and actually making contact with the wheel. So by adding a wheel spacer here, people can run big brake kits with their wheels. And similar to the brake caliper, another reason that people run the wheel spacers is to space out their wheel from their coilover. So a lot of cars, you know, just like a 240SX right here, for example, um, the wheel will actually hit the coilover if it's too high of an offset. So if you run a wheel spacer, you can space out the wheels that you have and they can clear the coilover. Another reason that people run spacers is to run different wheel sets on their car. So for instance, looking at my personal car, the bodywork on the car is meant to run an 18 by 11 plus zero. So that way when I have more power, I don't have to redo my bodywork and instead my bodywork fits the wheels that I want to end up running when I have more power. Now in the meantime, I have two different wheel sets that I run on here with this power level. This specific wheel is an 18 by nine and a half plus 15 NK TSP5. And I run this with a 25 millimeter spacer to have you know semi-decent fitment in the rear. And then if I'm running my NK Cogens, which are a 17 by nine plus 35, I throw on a 50 millimeter spacer in the rear. So that way I can have semi-decent fitment with it as, as well. And this 18 by 11 plus zero is meant to run with no spacer on the rear of this car. Now that I've gone over some of the common reasons that people run wheel spacers, I'm gonna show you the different types of spacers available on the market and what to watch out for when buying spacers. There are four main types of spacers available on the market, but before I cover them, I'm going to need to cover hub-centric and what it means and how important it is to have a hub-centric spacer. So this right here is the lip of the wheel hub, and this wheel hub is made to a specific diameter that also needs to be matched on the inside of your wheels, so that way your wheels can center properly, and that eliminates the possibility of vibration. So as you can see right here, this hub diameter is 66.1 millimeters, the hub diameter on this wheel is actually slightly larger, and so I run hub-centric rings with them that are placed in the center of the wheel and downsize the hub bore of the wheel to 66.1 millimeters to match my hub in order to make sure my wheel is centered on the hub when it's being tightened. So for our demonstration here, we're going to remove the hub-centric ring, and this is what keeps it centered on the hub. And now we're gonna install the wheel. And as you can see, I can move my wheel up and down on the hub 
because it is not centered. Now I'm gonna install my hub centric ring over here and I'm gonna reinstall the wheel. And as you can see, there's no more play from the wheel on the hub and it is centered. So that's why it's important to have hub centric rings as well as hub centric spacers on your car. So that way you can make sure that your wheel is always centered on the hub when tightening, mm -hmm. because otherwise there's a possibility of you getting a crazy vibration while you're driving because the wheel isn't seated properly and that can cause your lug nuts to come loose. And then of course your wheel would fall off from that. Seeing that we've covered what hub centric is, we can move on to the different types of spacers. The first type of spacer is a non hub centric slip on spacer, such as this one. What this spacer does is it just gets slipped on over top of your current lug nuts and sits right here and then you would mount your wheel on top of this. The downside on these is that they actually cover the hub center right here and so when you mount your wheel up, there is no hub sitting there to center your wheel and so you're gonna have a wheel that's put on uh, not centered. However, this type of spacer would be fine if you're running a much slimmer spacer of this style because when it would slip on, some of the hub lip over here would still be exposed and so your wheel would still be centered on here. But generally, if it's anything near this size, you shouldn't be running it. Moving on from the non-hub centric slip-on spacer, the next step above that would be a hub centric slip-on spacer. So that would be very similar to this spacer right here. Unfortunately, I don't have a hub centric slip-on spacer on hand, so you just please have to use some of your imagination. The hub centric slip-on spacer would just slip on over here. It would center on the hub because it would be made to fit exactly the 66.1 millimeter hub diameter. And it would also have a lip built into the spacer, such as the one on these hub centric spacers where your wheel would then center on top of the spacer. So it basically extends your hub lip that you have over here, so that way your wheel is still centered. This would allow you to have a slip-on spacer that's thicker, but it is still hub-centric. And usually that type of spacer would be paired with extended studs over here. That way your lug nuts still have a safe amount of thread to grab onto, even with the added thickness of the slip-on spacer. Moving on from the slip-on spacers, we get to bolt-on spacers such as this. Bolt-on spacers actually have studs pressed into them, from the back, that way, that way you can bolt them onto your current hub assembly with the provided hardware. And that way you eliminate the need to have extended studs over here. And this is particularly useful on large spacers such as this 50 millimeter spacer that would slide on over here and completely covers the stock studs on this hub assembly. That is how a bolt-on spacer works. So now I'm gonna talk about the two different types of bolt-on spacers that you have available. Um, there's going to be a hub-centric and a non-hub-centric. In my hand right now, I have an example of a hub-centric bolt-on spacer. The inner lip of this spacer is specifically machined for a 66.1 millimeter hub, which is the hub diameter on my vehicle. That way the spacer stays centered on the hub and there's no play. It also features a 66.1 millimeter diameter lip over here to emulate the stock hub lip that comes on the vehicle. That way the wheel being bolted on here will also be hub centric and will be centered on the hub. The last type of spacer is a bolt-on not hub centric spacer and unfortunately I don't have that on me so again please use your imagination. A bolt-on not hub centric spacer would look very similar to this except this whole hub lip as well as the properly machined diameter to match your hub would not be there. And instead this is usually oversized in order to fit on many types of vehicles hub diameters. That would be probably the only type of spacer that I would not recommend to run whatsoever and that's because there is no way of keeping the spacer centered on the hub and there's no way of keeping the wheel centered on the spacer and that just causes a lot of room for error as well as a lot of room for vibration which can cause your lug nuts to get loose and so there's a high chance of something going wrong. By far the safest type of spacer to run would be a hub centric bolt-on spacer. When properly sized for your hub diameter they make sure that the spacer is centered on the hub as well as your wheel is centered on your spacer. They also make sure that you have enough thread on the studs over here when you're tightening down your wheel, as well as enough threads on the studs that are on the hub assembly. And you can see many professional drivers running bolt-on hub-centric spacers, such as Daigo Saito, who actually runs two 50 millimeter spacers stacked one on top of the other um, per side of his car. And that's both on his GTR as well as his, as his old uh, Lexus SC that he had. Daigo Saito. So good, dude. So good. What? And those cars were both making around what a thousand horsepower. Yeah, another drifter that I've seen probably run the craziest spacer. He actually runs a 4.25 inch spacer, I believe. Last time I talked to him, and that is a one-piece hub-centric bolt-on spacer that's four and a quarter inches big, so um, roughly somewhere over a hundred millimeters. And remember, this is a 50. Then you also have my friend Fielding Shredder, and he's running. Uh, 
70 millimeter spacer in the rear of his car as well as a 40 millimeter spacer up front. Um, as we mentioned earlier, Kangushi also runs that type of spacer. I believe his are somewhere around like the 25 millimeter ish area. And for me personally, I'll either run no spacer, a 25 millimeter spacer, or a 50 millimeter spacer, just depending on what wheel uh, and tire combo that I'm running. So if you're looking to purchase spacers, make sure that they are hub centric spacers, unless they're, you know, maybe a four millimeter or less slip on type spacer. Another thing to look out for is the stud and nut quality on a lot of these spacers. Try and get spacers with high quality nuts and studs on here just to prevent them from stripping out or breaking. So these are actually my older 15 millimeter spacers that I used to run when I was four leg. And these were uh, very cheap nuts on here as well as um, very cheap studs. I, I, I think I cross threaded them a few times almost and they felt like they were about to strip a lot of the times. But you can also buy cheap spacers and actually press out the studs in here and press in new OEM quality studs. That way you can rest assured that the studs on here are a quality piece and that they're gonna be nice. And one more thing that I found to look out for after buying multiple sets of spacers is to make sure that this diameter of the hub is fairly larger than what you need it to be. So for instance, you can see how much thicker the aluminum here is on the edge compared to the aluminum right here on the edge. And I've actually seen pictures posted online where spacers that run this thin of a wall around the hole for the stud will actually tend to crack along here. Now these specific ones have been on multiple track days and have been on multiple vehicles and they have not cracked yet. However, if you are choosing in between two different types of spacers, make sure to watch out for how thin the aluminum gets around the holes for your studs. And if you're purchasing hub centric spacers, make sure that this hub diameter actually matches the hub diameter on your vehicle. If you get one too large, then it is just the same as you not even getting a hub centric spacer at all. And if you're gonna be running a non-hub centric slip-on spacer, make sure that it is not thicker than the hub lip that you have on your vehicle, so that way your wheel can still remain hub centric. That pretty much covers the different types of spacers out there, as well as what to look out for if you're purchasing your own spacers. Moving on, there seems to be a lot of people bad-mouthing spacers, as well as discouraging other people from running spacers, so I'd like to address those common arguments against spacers right now. The first and biggest argument against wheel spacers is that it puts a lot more load on the hub, and that leads to a wheel hub failure. As noted earlier, the point of the spacer is to change your effective offset of the wheel. So it is not specifically the spacer that is causing the excessive load on your hub, but it is rather the effective offset that you make your wheel that is causing the excessive load on your hub. For example, if you have a wheel that has a higher offset than your stock wheel at the same exact width, and you run a spacer on that wheel in order to bring the offset to exactly what it is at factory, there is going to be no extra load on it than what comes from from factory. So in essence, it is not the spacer that's at fault, but rather the effective offset that you're making your wheel that is at fault. And it makes more or less no difference how you get to that desired offset, whether you are buying the wheel with that correct offset on it, or you're buying the wheel with a higher offset and using a spacer to achieve it. Because as I'll show you next, wheel manufacturers will change the offset of their wheels by adding or subtracting materials to their wheel hubs. Just as if you were to attach a spacer to the back of the wheel. This right here is a Work Breeze X2, and this right here is the center from a Work VSXX. These are essentially the same wheels, just with different patterns on it, but made by the same exact company. Work Wheels, which is a manufacturer of these wheels, sells three different types of faces with their wheels, which all have different offsets, as well as material on the back of the faces. This right here, for instance, is a low disc, and this right here is a medium disc. As you can see with the low disc, it has a very minimal amount of material on the back of this wheel face. And moving to the medium disc, it has actually a good amount of material on the back over here, and this is essentially the same concept of what a wheel spacer would do when it's bolted up. And here I have an NKTSP5, and you can see how much material there is on the back of this wheel hub in comparison to a Work Rezax wheel hub with a low disc. And these right here are old school set of Riken meshes. This Riken mesh came in a 15 by seven plus 17, and you can see how little lip it has on the back over here. In comparison, here is a 15 by seven plus zero Riken mesh, which is essentially the same face design and everything of the other offset. However, it has an additional lip built in over here. So basically the manufacturers just add or subtract material to the back of these faces in order to get their desired offsets, which is why there really isn't too much of a difference between running a wheel spacer or running a wheel with a specific offset because they are effectively the same thing. And if you want an example of an OEM factory vehicle running a spacer, dually trucks are the perfect example. From factory, dually trucks will come with a super, super high positive offset front wheel, and they'll be mated to a massive, massive spacer 
on the front hub in order to compensate for that and they'll get a nice effective offset. That way the load on the bearing is just as if you were running a normal wheel with no spacer on the front end of a dually truck. Another argument that people make against spacers is that the spacers are illegal where they live and therefore they are bad. To put it simply, just because something is illegal does not make it bad. Uh, for instance, um, I can't have a six point harness in my car that's not DOT approved. So even though I have a six point FIA certified harness, and even if I run it with a Hans device, which is, which is by far safer than a regular three point in a car, that is still illegal on the road. So be, just because something is illegal where you live does not necessarily make it bad. Another argument is that running your spacers will shear off the studs off of your vehicle. And that's not, that's not even remotely true because your studs don't see a shear load on them. What takes the load of the wheel and transfers it to the hub is the clamping friction in between the wheel and the hub itself. So your lug nuts see a clamping load of let's say 85 foot pounds that you're putting on there when you're tightening your lugs, but they do not see a shear load. The only actual argument that I've seen against wheel spacers is the added unsprung weight from running the spacers. These wheel spacers actually weigh quite a bit, so they will add a good amount of unsprung weight to your vehicle. And this would be heavier than just running a wheel with the correct uh, offset that you already want on it. Thank you for watching this video and I hope it gave you a better understanding on wheel spacers as well as on the different misconceptions that are out there on wheel spacers. <laughs>